Sean Farnham. Great to have you with us. And here we go. Should be an excellent night of college basketball in Las Vegas. These two teams have developed a heck of a rivalry over the last decade plus. And remember, BYU leaving this conference has yet to win a regular season or conference tournament title. They, they could be 40 minutes away if they pull off the upset tonight over a ranked St. Mary's team to potentially finally accomplishing that feat. Aiden Mahaney and the Gales have the ball first, and Mahaney gets the very first basket of the game right down the lane. Starting five for BYU. Since Rudy Williams went back into the starting lineup for the Cougars, BYU's 3-0 maybe has played their best basketball of the season. Jackson Robinson, that was a nifty move, but came up short on the jumper. Meanwhile, for the Gills, lots of stability over the second half of the year. Johnson, Mahaney, Dukas, Bowen, Saxon, talented and very experienced, the starting five for the Gales. Logan Johnson, one of the best players in this league. Bounce pass to Mitchell Saxon. It's 4 nothing St. Mary's. Yeah, they, they need to get Mitchell Saxon involved in this game after the performance he had against Gonzaga, which was not like what he's done all season long. Really struggled in that contest. And I think if you're BYU, you want to try to get Foose the ball because he struggled the other night and get him going and try to see if he can attack and get to the length of Mitchell Saxon and get him on the bench. Gideon George with the drive and the layup. So that's the first points for BYU. Two teams that can play real grinded out style basketball, and yet in the early going, we've seen shots going down. Mahaney with the left hand, no. And Foose Triori with the defensive board. And Randy Bennett's going to be happy, though, that Aiden Mahaney is trying to assert himself early. That was something that we talked about today after shoot around with Coach Bennett. The first half, first, second half numbers, he said, listen, we're, we're telling him you've got to be a little bit more aggressive. We love how you let the game come to yourself and, and allow your teammates to get involved, but you need to make plays. Traore down the lane, kind of pinned underneath, gets it back to Spencer Johnson. Johnson right back to Traore, who missed it. And he should have gone up on the strong side instead of going for the reverse layup there. And Foos coming off a game that was not his best on Saturday in the quarterfinal win for BYU against Loyola Marymount. Johnson will shoot the three. That one no good. Here come the Cougars. Going to be key to take these advantage opportunities in transition. If you can't score in your initial break, look for your secondary break. Gideon George, three, no. Logan Johnson, first team all-conference, conference defensive player of the year. St. Mary's such a great defensive team as a group. Alex Dukas, three, no. Kyle Bowen, offensive rebound. There goes Dukas, flips it up and in. Offensive rebound, kick out, hard closeout. You straight line drive. Dukas was really smart and then went to his left. Well, Dukas had a real solid season. One of the better three-point shooters in the conference. Rudy Williams played really well on Saturday. Challenge Saxon and draws the foul. Getting downhill, and that, that's a concern for St. Mary's. You remember the first game in Provo? It was Hall that had a great job that down the hall of getting downhill on St. Mary's. Had a career game, really, that night for the freshman. Rudy Williams has that burst ability up top. And if they can get him in on-ball screens and get him downhill, you can pick up fouls on the interior of this St. Mary's team. And then you can try to punish them on the glass. Because Saxon is a really important player in regards to their ability to rebound and protect the rim. And Williams is just over and over again these last few games has been going to the free throw line. You see the numbers from Saturday, 11 of 12. All alone, he drew eight LMU fouls by himself yep. on Saturday. And he makes both free throws. Might not be a coincidence. Look, Dallin Hall, you mentioned he had a great game against St. Mary's, but since Rudy Williams back in the starting lineup, BYU's played better. Johnson tried to hit Saxon. That's a turnover. Robinson in the open court. Robinson, no. Johnson follow. Also no. Man, BYU did not take advantage of that. Mahaney, nice lead pass. But a little too far for Logan Johnson. And so the turnover for the Gales. Back-to-back -back turnovers for St. Mary's. I caught that. Did you see me? Good hands? No, I missed it. Right over the top of your head. I went up and grabbed it. <laughs> I got vice grips over here. Yeah, I was busy working. I'm not paying attention to what you're doing. I'm watching the game. Excellent hands. <laughs> Williams in and out, no good. Unusual to see St. Mary's turn the ball over two possessions in a row. They're playing a little quicker here early. 
You know, and I think that, that that helps them. At times, they get stuck, and their offensive rhythm, because they operate so well in the late shot clock situation, you sometimes can put yourself in, in trouble. But instead, they're, they're attacking a little bit quicker, and I think that that's important for them. Mark Pope, fourth year as a head coach at BYU. It's been a real up-and-down season for the Cougars. Spencer Johnson talking to Tony Padilla about that last whistle, apparently. Well, no, I think they're talking about his leggings on Spencer Johnson oh. because it has a Nike symbol on it. And I think they're saying that he can't have the Nike symbol on it. Huh. Bowen in the corner. Duke is open three. No. Long rebound. Tap back into the backcourt. So St. Mary's will keep the ball. And the shot clock, they reset the shot clock. And I think we're going to have to make an adjustment on that. Okay, so it's 28. They, they, they reset it when they shouldn't have. So we'll go back to 28, and St. Mary's has the ball. I think you're right about the Gales playing a little faster. Nice pass, Bowen underneath, didn't shoot it, kicked it back out to Dukas, who lays it in. But do you see how they're spacing them defensively a little bit? I mean, the offense is spacing the floor, they're making sure they're kicking out, and then it's forcing a long closeout. That's the second time Dukas has been able to get into the lane and then finish with his left. But I, I like the tempo and the pacing right now for St. Mary's a little bit better. Traore against Saxon, who's already got one foul, did not commit the foul there. Fight for the loose ball, and... They will call a foul, I think, against Aiden Mahaney. Now Mahaney with the reach in. So BYU will keep the ball. Our first time out on the floor. We're going to stay here, not go anywhere. We're about to have. Fairly play outstanding in Spokane. We got to reestablish ourselves and gain some momentum prior to getting in the NCAA tournament. And they're playing for seed lines potentially right now. The Gales, no doubt, are going to be in. BYU's got to win this tournament to play in the NCAA tournament. And they are capable. They could win two more games. Off the bench, Waterman, Hall, in for the Cougars. Triore down low. they got to get him going. Johnson, a tough catch, and the three. Perfect. They're shooting the ball well from beyond the arc right now. And getting his feet set underneath him. He played excellent defense the other night against Cam Shelton, who can flat out score the ball. He's averaging 21 points per game for LMU, and they really made him work for every point he had, and a lot of that was Spencer Johnson. Mahaney high off the glass. Good. Well, there's no doubt that St. Mary's has emphasized that he's got to be more assertive in the first half tonight. Well, and what it does is it takes some pressure off of Logan Johnson. Let's yeah, not forget, Aiden Mahaney had zero points at the half in Spokane. Traore, nice offensive rebound, and then he gets fouled going up. It's been a theme for Mahaney the first halves in these games against BYU and Gonzaga, frankly, where he's been almost non-existent offensively in the first half, and then often has saved the day with great performance in the second half. But really, I, I can't really remember a discrepancy in those head-to-head -head matchups. The overall numbers show you he's been a second-half player. But I mean, against BYU and the Zags, it's sort of unlike anything I've ever seen. That's four games total, four points total in the first half of those four games. 46 in the second half. It's money time and he steps up. But if he can play a whole game and play with this pace that I like, again, right now, he's going to have 20 plus points. And it's going to then open up the offense to help Logan Johnson. Just a two-point lead for the Gales, even though BYU's two of nine shooting in the early minutes. Kyle Bowen, nice move from him. And we welcome those of you who join us from that SOCON championship. Congrats to Furman. We're here in Las Vegas. Dave Fleming, Sean Farnham, WCC semifinal game number one. The top seed St. Mary's Gales, number 17 ranked team in the country against one of their real rivals, BYU. A spirited first few minutes. That's a travel for Noah Waterman.
How did we get to this point? Well, St. Mary's got the triple bye. This is their first game in this championship. BYU's already won two games. They beat LMU. Later tonight, we've got Gonzaga and San Francisco, second of these semifinal games in Vegas tonight. Now the head coach of the Gales, Randy Bennett, two straight years, coach of the year in this conference, has done a great job with this team. Aiden Mahaney, too strong, long rebound, a whistle though, underneath the basket, I think a foul against BYU. So pacing to this game so far today, for those that are just joining us right now, this is a St. Mary's team that is very methodical, and they've been a little bit more assertive here in the early stages of this game, and I think you're finding a better rhythm. And BYU's changed up its defense, it's gone from man to zone. Trying to figure out a way to slow him down. Mitchell Saxon, double team came nicely, and Saxon loses the ball. He's on the floor, and they're going to say out of bounds off of BYU. And for those of you looking for the conclusion of BYU and St. Mary's, head on over to ESPN right now. West Coast Conference semifinal. We'll have the other semifinal game featuring Gonzaga coming up at 11.30 p.m. Eastern right here on ESPN2. So again, BYU, St. Mary's over on ESPN. For Aaron Summers, for Dean Keener, and for our entire crew, I'm Anu Schwab. Thanks so much for watching. Now out to Las Vegas and the West Coast Conference Semis. And we welcome those of you who join us from that SOCON championship. Congrats to Furman. We're here in Las Vegas. Dave Fleming, Sean Farnham, WCC semifinal game number one. The top seed, St. Mary's Gales, number 17 ranked team in the country against one of their real rivals, BYU. A spirited first few minutes. That's a travel for Noah Waterman. How did we get to this point? Well, St. Mary's got the triple bye. This is their first game in this championship. BYU's already won two games. They beat LMU. Later tonight, we've got Gonzaga and San Francisco, second of these semifinal games in Vegas tonight. Now the head coach of the Gales, Randy Bennett, two straight years, coach of the year in this conference, has done a great job with this team. Aiden Mahaney, too strong, long rebound, a whistle, though, underneath the basket. I think a foul against BYU. So pacing to this game so far today for those that are just joining us right now This is a St. Mary's team that is very methodical and they've been a little bit more assertive here in the early stages of this game And I think you're finding a better rhythm and BYU's changed up its defense. It's gone from man to zone Trying to figure out a way to slow him down Mitchell Saxon double team came nicely and Saxon loses the ball He's on the floor and they're gonna say out of bounds off of BYU So Gales are lucky to keep the ball. And Saxon just, I mean, dribbled right into trouble, was going nowhere with it. Logan Johnson will shoot the three. That one no good. Cougars almost kick it out of bounds. I think BYU's got to look to push on those rebound situations as much as they do off of turnovers. Wow, Jackson Robinson, and did he, the ball get tipped? I don't think so. And it goes out of bounds. That'll be St. Mary's ball. Jackson Robinson had a really good game on Friday night. He played well at times on Saturday. He's an important player for Mark Pope's team. Here's the sensational freshman for St. Mary's, Aid Mahaney. He hit the dagger shot in Provo earlier this year at the buzzer to beat BYU. Saxon, another double team. Finds Kyle Bowen. He gets swarmed. Johnson passes up the three to attack the basket, and he got fouled. Well, this game has that sense of urgency feel early in it. A good shot fake, and then the drive going down the lane. But BYU playing with emotion, coaching with emotion. Mark Pope on the sideline. I'll be honest with you, I thought that was pretty clean up top by Jackson Robinson. Logan Johnson will get the two free throws. First team all-conference player, especially down the stretch. His scoring numbers were way up. Scoring's never been the hallmark of his game. He's been a really good all-around player for a bunch of years. His scoring has been great down the stretch. Dave, how about the last six games? 25.2 points per game in the last six. That includes a three-point performance against San Diego. That's how good his numbers have been. 
So he makes both free throws. Now you pointed out how spirited BYU looks. Look, their season is on the line. This has not been a great year for BYU. There have been some real down moments, but they have a chance to salvage all of it with two more wins here in Vegas. And they're capable. Atiki Ali Atiki got cut off by Saxon, almost traveled. Spencer Johnson working against Augustus Marshallonis, who's been a good player off the bench for the Gales. Johnson had it poked away by Saxon. Mahaney keeps it. That's a double dribble. I thought he dribbled and then put it that back on the floor. That was a double dribble. He, I thought he, so. he dribbled the ball, picked it up, pivoted. Nobody was available, and he just started dribbling again. I think he knew it, too. He was looking for some help initially. They said, oh, to heck with it. Maybe nobody noticed. They didn't. Mahaney against the big man out of bounds. And that'll send us to a timeout. Good start here in Las Vegas, St. Mary's and BYU. Early six-point lead for the Gales. He is how good Randy Bennett's program is. One of the top win percentages. That's going back almost a decade now. Some unbelievable what he's been able to accomplish. And if you have any doubt, the last Indiana in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year, what, what they left feeling about these St. Mary's Gales. And they're better this year than they were last year. In large part because that guy with the ball in his hands right now. A Mahaney, and they're going to say a foul on the floor. Mahaney has been so assertive in these first eight minutes. Dave, 12 of the 14 points so far have come in the paint. The other two have come from the free throw line. Uh, right now, St. Mary's feels like they can attack and they can drive on BYU. And they're not settling for any of their perimeter shots. They're 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. But their efficiency in the paint has been great. That was also the second foul against Spencer Johnson. That's big. He's one of BYU's very best players. Mitchell Saxon in the paint. Nice little duck under move. And he uses the glass to score. Two more in the paint. And they're going to work right now. BYU's got to figure it out. they got to bring help. they got to pinch in and force St. Mary's to shoot out over the top. The freshman, Dallin Hall, they're going to call offensive foul. Noah Waterman set an illegal screen. That goes down as a BYU turnover. And, and as long as Mitchell Saxon, who came off of a game again, Gonzaga, that was definitely not his strongest of the year, almost a non-factor in that contest. They're trying to get him involved early, and with good purpose, he is playing strong right now. He had two points, zero rebounds in Spokane. First team all-conference player. Extra pass, Duke is three, good. Beautiful, Beautiful ball movement. That, that, that is St. Mary's basketball, but with better tempo. They're not winding the shot clock all the way down to the last third, and they're getting better quality shots. They sure look like it's a nice way for them to play. Hall against Mahaney, that one way off the mark. Hall got in there, though, for the offensive rebound and draws a foul. We're accustomed to seeing St. Mary's have excellent ball movement. It just doesn't happen as usually... That early. So Gales are lucky to keep the ball. And Saxon just, I mean, dribbled right into trouble, was going nowhere with it. Logan Johnson will shoot the three. That one no good. Cougars almost kick it out of bounds. I think BYU's got to look to push on those rebound situations as much as they do off of turnovers. Wow, Jackson Robinson and did he. The ball get tipped? I don't think so. And it goes out of bounds. That'll be St. Mary's ball. Jackson Robinson had a really good game on Friday night. He played well at times on Saturday. He's an important player for Mark Pope's team. Here's the sensational freshman for St. Mary's, Aid Mahaney. He hit the dagger shot in Provo earlier this year. At the buzzer to beat BYU. Saxon, another double team, finds Kyle Bowen. He gets swarmed. Johnson passes up the three to attack the basket, and he got fouled. Well, this game has that sense of urgency feel early in it. A good shot fake, and then the drive going down the lane. But BYU playing with emotion, coaching with emotion. Mark Pope on the sideline. I'll be honest with you, I thought that was pretty clean up top by Jackson Robinson. Well, Logan Johnson will get the two free throws. First team all-conference player, especially down the stretch. His scoring numbers were way up. Scoring's never been the hallmark of his game. He's been a really good all-around player for a bunch of years. His scoring has been 
great down the stretch. Dave, how about the last six games? 25.2 points per game in the last six. That includes a three-point performance against San Diego. That's how good his numbers have been. So he makes both free throws. Now, you pointed out how spirited BYU looks. Look, their season is on the line. This has not been a great year for BYU. There have been some real down moments, but they have a chance to salvage all of it with two more wins here in Vegas. And they're capable. Atiki Ali Atiki got cut off by Saxon. Almost traveled. Spencer Johnson working against Augustus Marshallonis. who has been a good player off the bench for the Gales. Johnson had it poked away by Saxon. Mahaney keeps it. That's a double dribble. I thought he dribbled and then put it that back on the floor. That was a double dribble. He, I thought he, so. he dribbled the ball, picked it up, pivoted. Nobody was available, and he just started dribbling again. I think he knew it, too. He was looking for some help initially. They said, oh, to heck with it. Maybe nobody noticed. They didn't. Mahaney against the big man out of bounds. And that'll send us to a timeout. Good start here in Las Vegas. St. Mary's and BYU. Early six-point lead for the Gales. He is on college basketball. How good Randy Bennett's program is. One of the top win percentages. That's going back almost a decade now. Some unbelievable what he's been able to accomplish. And if you have any doubt, the last Indiana in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year, what, what they left feeling about these St. Mary's Gales. And they're better this year than they were last year. In large part because of that guy with the ball in his hands right now. A Mahaney, and they're going to say a foul on the floor. Mahaney has been so assertive in these first eight minutes. Dave, 12 of the 14 points so far have come in the paint. The other two have come from the free throw line. Uh, th right now, St. Mary's feels like they can attack and they can drive on BYU. And they're not settling for any of their perimeter shots. They're 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. But their efficiency in the paint has been great. That was also the second foul against Spencer Johnson. That's big. He's one of BYU's very best players. Mitchell Saxon in the paint. Nice little duck under move. And he uses the glass to score. Two more in the paint. And they're going to work right now. BYU's got to figure it out. They got to bring help. They got to pinch in and force St. Mary's to shoot out over the top. The freshman Dallin Hall, they're going to call offensive foul. Noah Waterman set an illegal screen. That goes down as a BYU turnover. And, and, and as long as Mitchell Saxon, who came off of a game again, Gonzaga, that was definitely not his strongest of the year, almost a non factor in that contest. They're trying to get him involved early and. With good purpose, he is playing strong right now. He had two points, zero rebounds in Spokane. First team all-conference player. Extra pass, Duke is three. Good. Beautiful, Beautiful ball movement. That, that, that is St. Mary's basketball, but with better tempo. They're not winding the shot clock all the way down to the last third, and they're getting better quality shots. They sure look like it's a nice way for them to play. Hall against Mahaney. That one way off the mark. Hall got in there, though, for the offensive rebound. And draws a foul. Well, we're accustomed to seeing St. Mary's have excellent ball movement. It just doesn't happen as usually that early in the shot clock. I mean, 15 seconds were left on the shot clock when that one went up. But it was a great clean look. And I think the key for them is you can still dictate the tempo by getting back and setting your defense. Offensively, you know you're comfortable working that final third. But taking a great shot that's available early is better than taking a rushed, contested shot late. Rudy Williams back in for BYU. He's been a big factor. That's a foul. Wow, Mitchell Saxon, that's just sloppy. That's his second. His second personal way away from the basket. And that's not going to make his head coach happy. He's going to, I assume, although Randy Bennett likes to roll the dice with his players in foul trouble, but I think Mitchell Saxon's probably coming out of the game, and in fact, he will. Harry Wetzel's the big freshman Did the seven-foot-one guy standing up off the bench, taking off his, his uh, sweatshirt, give it away? It was a clue, at okay. least. I'm just making sure. <laughs> it's a clue. I don't miss much. They don't call you the best in the business for nothing, partner. Down low. Triori had it stripped away. Nice help defense from Alex Dukas, because I was thinking that was going to be a layup for Foose Triore. Foose has vice grips when his hands get on the ball, so a rare opportunity to ever knock one away. Wessels is going to set the screen. That's a big screen. Marcelonis down the lane, and he just used the shot fake, lost his man, then Wessels was there for the offensive rebound. Marcelonis, that was an easy look for him that he missed, but BYU still committed the foul. So what, what has been the book on BYU all season long that we've talked about? Well, lack of size on the interior. 
And it doesn't really matter who they bring off the bench. They don't have great size underneath. It's not a great shot blocking team. So look to try to turn the corner and get down there. And Mark Pope's you know, had, had to mix up his lineups throughout the course of the year to try to find the right mixture. Free throw no good for Wessels. The St. Mary's freshman doesn't play big minutes, mostly when Saxon gets into some sort of foul trouble. Logan Johnson is going to come in. Aiden Mahaney will check out. I think St. Mary's has to be really pleased with the way Mahaney, the freshman, has started this game. Second free throw, good. It's 20 to 8. As St. Mary's, we often see the teams that get the bye deep into the tournament, the way it's set up here, struggle in the early minutes. That has not been the case for the Gales. Well, that speaks to the experience and the leadership on this roster. Williams straight down the lane to lay it in. Rinse and repeat that. I mean, that's that's where I think BYU needs to go. The same thing that they're getting at their defensive end, they need to give back to St. Mary's. Russell has got Williams guarding him, seven foot one. Just stay down low. Yeah, and the ball went right through his hands. Well, that's a turnover. Saunders on the run out. Saunders lays it in. That's a big little swing there because that was going to be a layup for St. Mary's on the other end. It turns into two for BYU. St. Mary's struggled with some turnovers in Spokane last Saturday, and the Zags were able to capitalize on it. There goes Logan Johnson. Wild shot. It goes down. Huh. He's going to make that one. Could be a big scoring night for Logan Johnson. Allen Hall had the best game of his career against St. Mary's in Provo. Marshallonis is going to get called for the bump or the hip check. We go back to the other end though. Logan Johnson, watch the way he explores here. The lefty gets to his right and able to extend away and, and able to finish up over the top. One of the things St. Mary's guards have always done, they have such good feel and touch around the basket. They utilize it high, soft off the glass, able to drop it in. Last year we watched Tommy Cousy make so many shots that look just like that. Waterman three, too strong. And Johnson went up for the rebound, had it knocked away though. You know, Richie Saunders just everywhere. I mean, he just, a lot of plays he makes, they don't show up in the box score, but he just got his team an extra possession. Saunders will shoot the three way short. Okay, so he got him an extra possession and then didn't take advantage of it. He has been a difference maker for them. Josh Jefferson came in to replace Harry Wessels. Jefferson, Las Vegas native, coming off the best game of his career, number five for St. Mary's. Played really well in Spokane. Marshallonis tried to slip one in there. Then Bowen was there for the offensive rebound. He's been crashing the glass early. And the foul against BYU. It'll be one and one in free throws for the rest of this half with 8.20 left to go. Now you mentioned Joshua Jefferson. You know, local product, number five in white for St. Mary's. Out of Liberty High School. It's got a bunch of family and friends here tonight. He has really started to play well, and I think his role is going to... He could be an all-conference player for St. Mary's moving forward. Yeah, I think he has that skill set. So front end of the one-on-one -on -one coming here. Uh, I think we'll have a chance to spotlight Jefferson throughout the game, because I agree with you. Kyle Bowman struggled at the free-throw line lately. He's got that new form, and it was working until recently. He hesitates and thinks on his shot a little bit too much. Great defensive player, doesn't need to score in order to win games for St. Mary's, but when he does score, it makes a world of difference. Jackson Robinson, away from the basket. Gideon George traveled. That's a BYU turnover. So the Gales have wrestled control of this WCC tournament semifinal game. Big news in the conference earlier today. We'll tell you about that when we come back to Vegas. When I heard, when we heard together the news that that's who the West Coast Conference was hiring, I mean, I, I perked up. Stu Jackson's got as much experience in the sport of basketball. And the WCC, it's a great all-around conference. They've got other sports where they shine in. But this is a basketball league. Yeah. And I think Stu Jackson is a really interesting guy to 
take this conference forward in a period of upheaval across the sport. I think he's going to do a really good job. I agree. And having a basketball mind in a basketball-centric conference is really, really important. Saunders, again, with the hands, got in there and stole the ball away. How do you not like watching him play and compete? He and Kyle Bowen are so similar. Triori lays it in. That is a huge, huge bucket for Foose. He can maybe breathe now a little bit. He was 0 for 2 before that one. And notice that they've been able to score off of turnovers and, and get out in the open floor against an unsettled defense for St. Mary's. So key because of how good St. Mary's is of clogging up and getting into the gaps. Mahaney back in off the bench. Aiden Mahaney uses the glass. So smooth, so simple. You know, I, I love letting the game come to you, but sometimes you can let the game come to you by making shots. It opens up everything for your teammates. You watch him play in these first halves, and you can almost see it happening. I'm the young guy, this experienced team. I respect my teammates. I want to let them. I don't want to be a ball hog. But he's their best scorer. He's their best player. He is. And that's no disrespect because Logan Johnson, by the way, has had an incredible season. Uh, but when Mahaney is, is flowing, and he's got more points here in the first half tonight than he did in four games against BYU and Gonzaga this season. Yeah, four total first-half points in those four conference games against BYU and Gonzaga. Here's Logan Johnson driving against Triore with the right hand. No good. Jefferson got a hand on the ball, but BYU has it, and then Kyle Bowen commits the foul. That's a foolish foul because that's going to make free throws at the other end of the floor. So Bowen's committed a couple fouls like that. Mitchell Saxon has. Saxon with two fouls is going to get up off the bench and come back in the game. And he'll replace Bowen, who's got two personals. And Randy Bingo, why are you fouling there? I mean, he, and for an experienced player that is a very good defensive player, you're not fouling on a, on a defensive rebound 94 feet away from your basket. Just get back and defend it and set up your defense. Front end for Triore. Big man who shoots free throws well is good. Reminder, our second game later tonight. San Francisco, the sixth seed, is into the semifinals. Incredible win against Santa Clara. Late night Saturday, if you stayed up with us for that one. Plenty did. We congratulate you. They checked in on Twitter and let us know where they were watching it from. <laughs> Double overtime. Khalil Shabazz, what a show he put on. Can he do it again tonight? Had one of the all-time great games in the history of this tournament for San Francisco. Dukas has got the smaller Rudy Williams on him. BYU's defense been a little more stout in these last few minutes. Lead down to six for the Gales. Mahaney, three. Good! With a hand in his face. You know, sometimes you wonder how a freshman will show up in, a, in their first tournament experience. You know, I mean, this is a prelude to the NCAA tournament. If what we've seen so far in the first half is any indication, Gales fans should be thrilled. Yeah, and fans that see St. Mary's in their bracket shouldn't be thrilled. Long three from Rudy Williams, no good. Here comes Mahaney and St. Mary's. Because you're right, this is his first time in a tournament setting. March is different. And how you respond to it often determines the type of player you are. Mahaney gave it up, even though he had Traore on him. Dukas down low to Saxon, who gets fouled. Well, Aiden Mahaney, he's done it his entire life. I mean, he just, in big games, in big situations, he steps up. And it, it, look, it's win or go home, right? Like, you, you win the game, you get to stay and play for the finals. If you lose, you wait until Selection Sunday, and you've got another long time period of time off in between games. But a great start for Aiden Mahaney. I go back to his... Sophomore year, they played Salesian when he was at Camp Alindo, and he scored 21 points in the second half of that game. He's been a great player since he was really young. Saxon misses the first of two. We got you covered, of course, on Selection Sunday, since we're talking about it. Starts at noon Eastern on ESPN College Basketball Live to prep the day at 6. Reese and the guys look at the men's field of 68 as the bracket, brackets get announced. Then we got bracketology, breakdowns of every region. At 8, the women's field of 68 is revealed. So that's Selection Sunday. Everything will stream live on the ESPN app. Saxon missed them both. Leaving some points on the board right now. Allows... BYU, if they can get a couple of stops, tighten this thing up and steal some momentum here in the final five minutes of this first half. I haven't done the full deep dive to really figure if I'm right. Robinson along the baseline. Tough shot, good. 
I would say that Aiden Mahaney's close against Gonzaga in Moraga, the home game for St. Mary's, was the best five-minute stretch of basketball in the country this year. Given the scenario where the game was at, I wouldn't disagree with you. I mean, because it looked like Gonzaga was going to win that game in Moraga. He almost threw it away here. And St. Mary's a little ragged a couple of these possessions. Johnson hesitation move. There goes Dukas down the lane. Jefferson, three. Good for the freshman. Back in his hometown. The product out of Liberty. Great high school program. A ton of talent on that roster this year. He, he was a standout on the prep circuit. And you can see the confidence growing in him. Rudy Williams down the lane. Williams challenged Saxon. Offensive rebound. Ali Atiki fell to the ground. Gideon George goes baseline. Almost traveled. Saunders catch and shoot three. Ball out of bounds off of BYU. Great scrambling at the defensive end of the floor by St. Mary's. Make it a contested three, even on the late closeout for Saunders. Late shot clock situation gets already to the Gales. You need a shooter on the outside. Speaking of shooters, have you seen Walter Ellis from Grand Canyon this year? He could play or good shooter. He could shoot the ball. I'm speaking it into existence. We need to get our man to the three-point slam dunk competition down in Houston. Can I also just follow up on Coach Greenberg and what he said? Of course BYU can win this game. We do want people to stay with us. <laughs> hey, they, these two teams played two extremely close games in the regular season. It came down to the final minute and in one instance to the very final second of the game. Out of the timeout, Logan Johnson just bounced it out of bounds. Well, and, and to your point, we have seen stretches where St. Mary's offense looks good right now. But let's not forget, they went seven minutes plus without scoring against USD. And all of a sudden, a big, big lead went away real quick down there in San Diego. So this is a team that can get stuck offensively. That's why I think their pace, which is a little bit quicker here tonight, is important to maintain. BYU ball, final three minutes of this first half, trying to cut into the lead. Bowen, who's got the two personals, knocked the ball away, but BYU kept it. Rudy Williams just swarmed there. Trey Stewart working against Aiden Mahaney. That's a tough shot. Way short. Every shot's a tough shot when you play against St. Mary's. Coach was talking about their ball screen defense. The way they're able to communicate, and we see it at their shoot arounds. I mean, you and I were sitting there today, and they're just going through walkthrough. And, and their guys, the way they fight and make sure that wherever the ball is, there's a hand. Mahaney, jump shot no good. It's an elite defensive program that has a way they like to play, and they do it year after year. Mark Fuse, the all-time winningest coach in this conference's history. Number two on that list is on the St. Mary's sideline, Randy Bennett. Down low, Atiki Ali Atiki, and I guess they called a the cylinder. Foul. Yeah, they called it inside the cylinder. Tony Padilla on the call. Great crew here tonight. Mike Irby, Mike Reed, Tony Padilla, very experienced West Coast officiating crew. So Ali Atiki, who is not a great free throw shooter, will go to the line for BYU. Front end of the one and one. Final two minutes plus of this first half. BYU needs points in transition. They could also use some easier points at the free throw line. Just any way you can get something that's not contested against St. Mary's is a bonus, but the front end was missed. Gales, uh, three of seven at the line, including a front end miss. Otherwise, this lead would be even bigger. Jefferson, three. Not this time. Bowen there for the offensive board. He's had a bunch of them in this first half. And we'll call Trey Stewart with that foul leaning on Jefferson down low on the block. And one reason why St. Mary's is just consistently good. They play at their pace, and it's not a fast pace. They shoot the ball well. They limit your points. They limit your second chances. They're one of the best defensive rebounding teams in the country. Front end good. I like this one on their defense. We don't have it on the graphic there. Third lowest percentage 
of buckets assisted on against them. Yeah, they really force you to, to get out. They take away option one. They take away option two. They're so disciplined. And again, that goes back to that core leadership, the trio of Bowen, Dukas, and Johnson. They live together. They've been the leaders of this program. But the culture in which Randy Bennett has built this year's senior class, as good as any that they've had there as far as that goes. What separates them is they compete every single possession. They don't take one off. You might beat them. They might have a lapse, but it's not because they're not competing. Look at the way they're shown here defensively. Active and, hands. Yeah, Johnson got the handle of the ball, deflected it. Here comes Mahaney. Nice pass to Johnson. Johnson gets fouled. That was really a nicely executed fast break. And, and it was all predicated upon their defense. And when you're, when you're able to show, recover, shrink the floor on your opponent, have active hands, pinch in, get a steal, you can create opportunities to run out. And that's another example of St. Mary's being willing to play a little quicker here tonight. Double bonus for the Gales. It was a two-shot foul anyway. Logan Johnson misses the first free throw. The free throw misses have kept BYU in the game. They really have. And, and let's not forget, BYU erased a 13-point deficit two nights ago in this building in the first five minutes of the second half. Long way from being over in this one. Second free throw, also no good. Man, kind of hard to believe. The BYU gets something on offense in this final minute. Rudy Williams goes by Johnson. Challenged by Bowen, and the ball swatted away. Johnson will save it in bounds. I think that was Dukas who gets credit for the block. He's had a nice solid first half. Mahaney calls for Bowen to come up and set the screen. That's what Kyle Bowen does. Mahaney gets that switch. Wants it back against the big man. Shot clock winding down. Down the lane, flips it up, and no good. Jefferson, rebound, didn't travel. Now the shot clock is off. Mahaney, open three, good! And I don't know, did they give... A foul, they did for BYU. They, you want to end this half. You give up a three-pointer, and now, you, because, again, the shot was good... It's deemed a dead ball contact technical foul. Two free throws, and Duke just gets to step to the line and extend out this lead with 9.1. St. Mary's not taking any free throw for granted in the first half, but he made the first. Dukas makes them both, and St. Mary's gets the ball. Randy Bennett will use that timeout. It's just a short timeout, so we'll step aside and come back. St. Mary's has a chance to make this an all-time finish to a half right after this. Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. With the money we saved, we tried electric unicycles. I think I got it. Okay. Doggy paddle. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Buffalo Ranch. Two titans of sauce. Brought together in a spicy, tangy, buttery sauce super team. So good, it's not even fair. All new Buffalo Ranch. For a limited time at Buffalo Wild Wings. Wow, what a last minute for both teams. BYU has to be a little stunned. St. Mary's has a chance for the final shot now. Already up 17 after a technical foul and two free throws. All right. You look at what we saw in the season. Four games, four points by Mahaney against BYU Gonzaga. 12 here. A great first half for the freshman in his first WCC tournament game. So many times this year, it's been clear he's just he's just been passive in first half. Not tonight. A 10 nothing run already. Inbound play. Mahaney's going to get the ball. Aid Mahaney, I believe, is going to be taking this final shot. Mahaney 
Tough, got blocked by Robinson, and the first half will come to an end. Still, though, the 10-0 run means a 17-point halftime lead for the Gales. But what a first half. Offensively, they did everything they wanted to do, but even more so, it's a freshman in his first WCC tournament game. So many times this year, it's been clear he's just... He's just been passive in first half, not tonight. A 10-0 run already. Inbound play. Mahaney's going to get the ball. Aiden Mahaney, I believe, is going to be taking this final shot. Mahaney, tough, got blocked by Robinson, and the first half will come to an end. Still, though, the 10-0 run means a 17-point halftime lead for the Gales. But what a first half. Offensively, they did everything they wanted to. And St. Mary's wants him to be more aggressive. He took that message to heart. There, there comes a time where you're no longer a freshman in, the, in your freshman season. You know, you, you get the minutes you've had. You've earned the opportunity and the right to be assertive. And this senior group knows that an Aiden Mahaney that's more engaged early can really help them. Spencer Johnson lays it in. First play of the second half. Johnson missed most of the first half. Mark Pope does have a different philosophy. He got the two fouls and never came back in the game. Randy Bennett's willing to play his players with two fouls much more liberally. They'd also like to see Fus Traore get more involved in this game. Five points, but only one of three shooting. Mahaney stepped through and hits the shot from the free throw line. How smooth is his game? Just composed, on balance, stays within himself, knows what his limitations are and executes to it. Can finish with both hands around the rim, can take some contact even for a guy who still is a smaller freshman. Traore gave it up. Any good defense there. Foos gets it back against Saxon with the left hand scores. Two good possessions by BYU in a, in a row. Uh, it was the back screen on the first one that time, playing through 45 and getting deep post position with two feet in the paint. So a lot more ground to make up, but that's an encouraging start, I think, for BYU. Morgan Johnson almost fell down. Kyle Bowen passed up the three. Just a very reluctant shooter. Dukas is not that. He hits the three. Great offense to start the second half by both teams. The problem is when you're the team trying to catch up, you got to get stops. Alex Dukas having a real solid game. Saxon almost picked up his third personal foul, reaching around the back of Foose there. Foose, that one just looked awkward. Hurried it. Not been the normal couple games for him. I mean, he's, he's really a player who's easy to admire. He's worked so hard on his game. Just not playing his best here in Vegas. Dukas, very smooth. Hey, listen, if St. Mary's offense looks like this, they're going to... They got a chance to win this tournament, but even in that next one, they got a chance to advance because uh, their defense is good. But if they can avoid these offensive lulls, it's they're tough to beat. This is about as good as they've looked all year, and they've had a lot of games where they've played really well. Traore, tough shot, use the glass. All right, you got to keep going to them, and you got to hope you get some fouls on Saxon, get him out of the game, but then. It comes down to this end of the floor, Dave. You gotta, you gotta string together three, four stops in a row right now if you're BYU. And BYU's been a good defensive team this year. I mean, they pride themselves on that. Dukas is feeling it. Another three for Alex Dukas. Good night. Man. Seth, you wanna ask me that question again in studio? <laughs> yeah, we might have a different answer if you ask it again. Rudy Williams, Logan Johnson swatted that one out of bounds. Oh, my. I mean, now look, everything's flowing. Aiden Mahaney gets going early. What does that do? It opens up the offense for their teammates. They go. BYU's trying everything. They go to a zone on that possession, and Duke is just as fine. Go to a zone, sag off of me. I'm going to drill it. A 21-point lead for St. Mary's. And the three-point differential starting to grow. St. Mary's was cold from the outside at the start of the game. Not anymore. They went 0 for 5 to start from beyond the arc. Williams, tough fall away, got the friendly roll. St. Mary's has made it much tougher on Rudy Williams in this game, even though he does have eight points. St. Mary's is six for their last seven from deep. Oh. Now a 
a foul away from the ball. Saxon got shoved to the ground. Mahaney, <laughs> Mahaney threw one in anyway. He heard you. Hey, we got to keep the streak going. Yeah, that's Spencer. Jones. They change it from a regular foul to a flagrant one. You can't do that. It's going to get called. BYU is unhappy about the call, but you, you, you want to tag. But there's a difference of tagging the roller and then making contact in the lower back like that. Now this has gone from bad to worse real quickly here for BYU. Saxon makes both free throws. So St. Mary's gets the two free throws plus the ball on the flagrant one. I mean, was it the worst thing you've ever seen? It wasn't, but it, it just it's going to get called like that. So maybe some frustration just boiling over for BYU. They have a technical foul at the end of the first half. Now flagrant one here. Logan Johnson goes all the way and uses the glass. Ends up being a four-point possession. And the lead continues to balloon. Gosh, St. Mary's looks good. Saunders curls around. Misses the three. Bowen wanted the flop call against Saunders, who literally did go if they, flying if they called that, though, yeah, <laughs> BYU fans, we, they would not have been happy inside this building. Shot clock down to five. Logan Johnson with crossover move. No. Ball goes out of bounds, though, I think, off of Jackson Robinson. Well, and see, here's what happens when you when you have this deficit. Now we saw an aggressive St. Mary's because they let their offense play a little freer early in this game. Now you're going to have to defend all the way late in the shot clock because now they can slow down the tempo, and it works in their benefit. A really quiet game for Robinson. Traore also just hasn't played up to his normal level. Those two come out. 20 to shoot for the Gales. Mitchell Saxon drives right past Aliatiki, scores with a foul. What a difference it is. I mean, look, anybody that watched the game last Saturday, Mitchell Saxon was a non-factor in that contest, and he has been much more assertive, playing with much stronger purpose here tonight. Aiden Mahaney was a no-show in the first half of that game, had zero points, had 12 at the break here. Very motivated St. Mary's team, and two players that felt like to a certain extent, they kind of let down their team by their performance last week. They have really stepped up here tonight. And St. Mary's still found a way to be in that game, but they really didn't play well. It was a chance for them to win the league championship outright. They didn't do it. So the Zags and St. Mary's shared the conference title. Mahaney defending against Spencer Johnson, who scores over top him. Good move. Isolation. Utilize the size and the length advantage. Nice pass. And then Dukas with a little pass fake. Saunders fouled him. They're giving him, they're giving him two shots? That was yeah, a pass. I thought he was going to pass the ball. For the Gales, 44, Alex Dukas. He'll shoot it too. Dave, he, he passed that ball underneath. No protest from the head coach of BYU. In the NBA, you got the little button you can push now. Yeah. Play some games. <laughs> Mark Pope has been hitting the button like 20 times over the course of this game so far. So Dukas now, he's got 17. He leads everybody in this one, make it 18. With under 15 to go. St. Mary's already pulling away. Saunders, three. Good. I'd like to see a couple more of those go down. Good offensive possession of getting the ball inside. When BYU's had good shots from beyond the arc, so far here in this building when they've knocked them down, the ball has always gotten to the paint and shrunk the defense and then forced that long closeout. Johnson against Hall, the freshman for BYU. They're going to call offensive foul. Johnson knocked him down. I think that's just trying to do a little bit too much right there by Logan Johnson. Good position defense here. So 
some people home they say that's a flop I think it's a good call all through traffic flips it up no good Saxon rebound and then a foul it'll be the fourth foul on BYU already BYU going to extend out some pressure here. They got to do something. Now, St. Mary's did not handle the pressure the other day well. Logan Johnson, in particular, some turnovers. And here's another one. Yeah, they didn't handle this well at all. And Johnson reached in and fouled Dallin Hall. Well, St. Mary's is going to see more of this if they can't prove that they can handle it. Well, first of all, if they play Gonzaga tomorrow night, you, I, if I'm Mark Few, I, I go right back to that three quarter court press. And St. Mary's did not handle it well. They didn't handle the first attempt to see in a press here tonight very well. I don't know what we're looking at here at the scorer's table now. At 28. Okay. BYU ball. After forcing the turnover. See if they can turn that into points. Ball three. Good. Now you pick up the pressure again. Can you turn it over? Can you force St. Mary's to be uncomfortable? Here comes the trap. Hey, Logan Pat. Johnson. I mean, you, you cannot catch the ball there. That is less than ideal where you want to catch the ball. You want to catch it free throw line extended, not going to the corner on the baseline, which adds in another defender. That's such a great year. You know, the numbers are very comparable to that in which we've seen from Patty Mills. And then the last freshman that's kind of had a season like this for St. Mary's. He only played two years before he left and went to the league. Aiden Haney's got some growth still ahead of him. Uh, but boy, has he played well. Trying to break the pressure, they do this time. One thing Randy Bennett did talk to us about earlier today, we asked him about the press by Gonzaga, and he said, well, Aiden's got to grow as a point guard. He's such a natural scorer, such a good player, and you see it in lots of different moments. Dukas lost it out of bounds. It'll be BYU ball, but Coach Bennett's point to us was, he's got to take a little more charge, work on those point guard skills. We need him against the press. Well, they've gone to Logan Johnson three straight times on entry passes. They've turned it over once, had to call a timeout the second time. The third time, they were able to get up the sideline. But I, I think Mahaney's got to get more comfortable being a lead guard. He's more than capable of doing it. That's a hand check. Yeah, he commits the foul. Now Hall gets right in his face. Mahaney didn't like that. This game's it's gotten... technical on Alex Dukas. Uh oh. Okay. Which will result in two free throws from BYU. Okay. And Mahaney's going to go to the bench. So maybe Randy Bennett will try to give him a little cool down time. Spencer Johnson, the free throw shooter. Every point important for BYU. As they try to come back from what at one point was a 26 point deficit. And they have cut into that lead now. Under 13 to go. Johnson makes them both. St. Mary's has had some as good as they are. And they're one of the best teams in the country. But they've had some games where they have not closed out well. well the 8-0 run right now by BYU. And, and again, I go back to that San Diego game. They went seven minutes without scoring. Seven minutes. If they do that here, this, this lead's going to evaporate. BYU's got to continue to attack, though. They've been much better at getting the ball in the paint. Hall throws it up, and the dunk from Ali Atiki. More pressure. St. Mary's just does not look comfortable against the press. they got to get it up the court. And they just barely did. I, I thought it was a 10-second violation right there, partner. Uh, they, if, if it wasn't, it was by the slimmest of margins. This is going to be an issue for St. Mary's now moving forward. If you're anybody in the NCAA tournament, you're watching, you're saying, okay, what kind of zone press do we have and what kind of problems can we create for it? Well, that's going to be a block foul against a Tiki. Well, at the other end, it was a great... 
drive, and both guys went to the ball. Nobody rolled with a tiki. They didn't tag him. That created that space. You had three guys essentially on the ball. Saxon, Dukas, and Marshall Onis all went to the ball. That vacated that weak side block. Just throw it up. Great play by Hall. Two free throws for Logan Johnson, and he misses the first. Uh, free throws have been a problem for St. Mary's tonight. I mean, of all the things they've done well, it's been the free throw line that has caused them issues. They're 12 of 19 as a team. Logan Johnson's 2 of 5. And that sort of allows the momentum for BYU to keep building. One of two for Logan Johnson. I mean, BYU, I know they're down 17. They're feeling like they're back in this game. That's that coverage on the on-ball screen there. So good. Waterman down low to Ali Otiki. Hook shot goes. He's played really well. Well, the key to getting in your press is making shots. And right now, BYU is making shots, and that's allowing them to extend out their pressure. Marcelonis kind of flung one cross court. He got it there. But even now, St. Mary's is disjointed. Have to call a timeout. The whole feel of the game has changed. Getting feisty. It's it getting really fun is. here in Las Vegas. It really, yes. Lead is down to 15. Isaiah Wong looked to attack. They're aggressive. Jim Laranega's team is a team to keep an eye on in the NCAA tournament. I mean, if you ask people around the country, who's the number one seed in the ACC tournament? I, I, even college basketball fans, diehards, might have a hard time saying Miami, number one seed in that tournament. Meanwhile, here in Las Vegas, a huge lead for St. Mary's. It's still a significant lead, but it's been whittled down. And the Gales just not looking like themselves these last few minutes. Credit BYU for that. Marshallonis drives, and he got Waterman in the air to draw the foul. A hard foul. Well, part of it has been the turnovers. Uh, the, the extension of the press, it, the turnovers are an important aspect, right? They had, St. Mary's had five turnovers in the first 20 minutes. They've had four turnovers in the last three and a half minutes, and that's allowed a 12-1 run by BYU. But even more so than that, the press that extends out, when they do break the press, St. Mary's hits the brakes. They don't make you pay for pressing them. And when you pull it back out, we saw this against Gonzaga. All of a sudden now, you're so late in the shot clock, you really can't run your multiple screen actions that Randy Bennett wants to run. And the free throw shooting's just been terrible for St. Mary's. One of two for... Augustus Marcellonis, son of an all-time great Sharunas Marcellonis. BYU trying to keep that pressure on here. Allen Hall had his best game of the year against St. Mary's. Missed that shot. Rebound Kyle Bowen. Aiden Mahaney still stays on the bench. I think we'll probably see him relatively soon here. This lineup on the floor, Logan Johnson is their primary scorer. Have to have awareness of where he is at all times. Clock down, number 10. Johnson against Ali Atiki. Went right by him, but missed the shot. And the ball's going to carry him out of bounds off of St. Mary's. So BYU gets it back. Now the defensive stop. You've got to be able to attack and try to turn the corner. And Paul was able to turn the corner in Provo on the on-ball screens and get layups and floaters in the paint. That was key to his success in the night that he had. Saunders got cut off. Paul, oh, tough shot, three, in and out. Did everything but go down. And Rudy Williams is back up. He's got to look to, to be aggressive coming back in the game. So does Cruz Traore. Bonus. More good BYU defense. Just a prayer, and it goes down. He flung it up high off the backboard. But no, Abe Mahaney. Marshall Onis has been really aggressive. Saunders, equally tough shot. His shoe flies off. He gets the shoe back on and then hustle back on defense. That was a really good, aggressive, fast take. It's hard to get good, clean looks against St. Mary's. 
if you can drive them and you feel confident enough in the paint, you can create opportunities. Saxon, one dribble, way too strong. Now you got to run out of this. GYU trying to push tempo. Waterman, three. That one no good. And Saxon got back for the board, then lost it. Loose ball comes to Dukas. St. Mary's will hit the brakes again. Yeah. And they do have a tendency to do this, which you can understand when they go up this big. Dukas way outside, no good. Hall draws another foul. Uh, just a great change of pace. Thought he was going to go for the step back as the defense steps in. That's when you can explode by him if you're on balance. Paul was able to do that and get the foul and get to the free throw line. So clock stops. I mean, there's still 8.27 to go. It is not easy to come from behind the kind of deficit that BYU faced, but. Well, especially because of tempo. I mean, because there's a lot of teams, if you play fast, you can erase it really quickly. The key for BYU has been their shot-making ability, allowing them to get in the press. They're going to go right back to it and get in that diamond right away if he makes the shot here. Mahaney comes in for Marcelonis. So several minutes on the bench for Aid Mahaney, who's had a quiet second half, plus has gotten called for a technical foul. And Rudy Williams is going to be checking in for Hall if he makes the shot, which allows them to set up their press. Way short. missed it. Rebound. Saunders gets a hand on him and comes away with the ball. Johnson, three, gets fouled by Kyle Bowen. Three free throws coming up for Spencer Johnson. This could be a 12-point game. How about Richie Saunders? I mean, Dave, you and I, we've seen so many of these games, but Richie Saunders just somehow, some way, finds the ball. He'll dive on the loose ball. He'll scrap on the floor. He fights for an offensive rebound there and got three free throws for his teammate based on his energy and his effort. So now Johnson at the line to try to capitalize on that hustle. Missed the first. BYU can't miss free throws right now. They've gotten the gift of all the missed free throws for St. Mary's. But when you're coming from behind, you can't give those gifts right back. Two more still to come. And Saunders, in some ways, he's like the young version of Kyle Bowen. The, the Gales do, a, he's a, maybe a more skilled offensive player than Bowen, but in terms of that effort and annoyance factor, it's high. And I mean that as a compliment. You call me annoying all the time. And it's a compliment when I do. <laughs> All right, he made two. This is a 17-4 run for BYU. And again, the pressure. Mahaney kicked ball. I mean, they got it across, but even there, just not easy. And they're never making BYU pay for it. No. And now it's 21 seconds. Almost 10 seconds have already run off the clock, and they haven't started anything in this possession. And the lead is down to 13. BYU gets a stop here. And that belief grows even more. Johnson, oh, what a move right by for the layup. All right, just beautiful how he rocked it back to his left and then came right back to his right. Big time move. Traore hands it off to Rudy Williams. Traore against Saxon. Good defense from Saxon until he committed the foul. So Foose will go to the free throw line. Now Logan Johnson has not necessarily scored at the same level we've seen in recent games, but watch it just shift the big move. Still to come later tonight. You pacing yourself? Oh, always do. Moderation is key. <laughs> you live by that, credo. <laughs> Triori at the free throw line. Under eight to go. BYU's done a really nice job getting closer. Now a couple missed free throws in the last minute, hurting their cause. One of the big reasons they've been able to get in, though, the bench has scored 13 points here in the second half. They wow. only had two at the break. But he cannot go 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Yeah, that's unlike him because he's a really good free throw shooting big man. So 
Now Mahaney and the Gales. They defended Aiden Mahaney really well in the second half after his big first half. The foul situation, what it is, if you're BYU, you do want to play through the paint and you want to play downhill and try to get to the foul line, stop the clock, and elongate the game. Johnson had it knocked out of bounds. They had Mitchell Saxon posting up against Spencer Johnson. Couldn't get him the ball. So out of bounds, seven to shoot for St. Mary's. Saxon. Will flip one up off the glass. It goes. Well, they didn't bring any help in the length. Mitchell Saxon just able to see over the top of Cruz Traore. So that's a big basket. Every basket for St. Mary's makes the tax so much tougher for BYU. Here goes Saunders down the lane. Saunders draws a foul. I want to be against Saxon. A good drive by Saunders, but let's go back to the previous possession. Out of bounds underneath. You have to know your options are limited. Time is limited. Seven seconds were on the clock. Look at the poise and the patience and the footwork by Mitchell Saxon. I mean, here's a young man who's just got more opportunity this year, but he's really one of the more improved players in the West Coast Conference. And a season ago, Randy Bennett, we were at BYU together, and Randy Bennett was single-handedly taking him aside and working on his offensive skill sets. Like, hey, he may not be there right now, but watch what he's going to do next year. And Saxon has been a guy that has emerged and stepped up huge for St. Mary's this season. Went from averaging, what, two points a game to a first-team all-conference player? He's pretty good. He does have four fouls. He comes out. Josh Jefferson, who's given St. Mary's great minutes lately, comes in. More pressure. Shoot this up the court to Jefferson. I would have trapped it there with the freshman getting the ball. Well, he loses it. Hall steals it away. So more problems with the press for St. Mary's. Here's Hall. Got Mahaney in the air. Ali Atiki down low. One dribble against Bowen. Scores. He's been the more effective big man for BYU. He really has. And he was more effective the other night, too, with the blocked shots. There could be a five-second call here. Almost did. Johnson trapped. Logan Johnson finds Jefferson. He is unsettled with the ball. you got to bring a double on him. And then stay in that double there. Alex Zucas has settled things down. But this press has been really, really good for BYU. This game is definitely not over. Six minutes still to go. Mahaney missed the shot, missed the follow. Long rebound, Gideon George comes away with it. Gideon George on the move. He scores in transition. And the lead is down to 11. More press here. Dukas almost threw it away. And St. Mary's is going backwards. Jefferson. See, I think you've got to drive to try to finish that on the layup. They just, not, I don't think one time have they made BYU pay for that press. Shot clock winding down. Alex Dukas, tough, tough shot. No good. Rebound Cougars. Saunders lost it out of bounds. It'll be off St. Mary's. Well, this is incredible. Right now, you, you can see the energy building, the rock that is here, the student section for BYU. They sold out their allotment. They filled it up tonight. Feeding off that energy a little bit right now, but I like the way Hall's approaching things at, at the lead guard position. He's been the guy who's been really assertive. Trying to take Mahaney. Finds George. Elevates for three. A foul on the three against Jefferson. Unbelievable. That is the second time here in the second half they have fouled a three-point shooter. As Spencer Johnson made two out of three. Gideon George. They're trying to make all three. This was a 26-point lead for St. Mary's. More than five minutes into the second half. Talking about ten minutes of ball, and BYU has slashed the lead way down getting closer by the minute this is unbelievable to see the way that BYU has fought and they have had to fight to, to keep themselves in this game their defense has stepped up the press has been outstanding Ali Atiki has been great Richie Saunders has made big plays and here we go partner 
It hasn't been this close since the first half. Gideon George made them all. So now they set up the press. The lead is down to eight. And St. Mary's can't even get the ball in. Logan Johnson has to call a timeout. Well, and they keep running to what is considered the coffin corner. That's the baseline in the corner where the end line and the sideline meet. The Gales are not getting themselves to look that way so far here in the second half. They're, his guards are catching the ball too deep. They're having trouble even getting open on the inbound. And St. Mary's also has blown through all of their timeouts, so they don't have a single one left in case this pressure ramps up even more. You got to trap that right there. They did. That should have been a steal. Mahaney at least found a way to get through it. Richie Saunders has got to be the one there that cheats all the way in and gets that deflection. Four and a half to go. Alex Dukas, three. Good big basket for Alex Dukas. Huge. 22 for Dukas. He's been outstanding tonight. That's their first points in about three minutes. Calms things down for the moment. BYU still playing with high energy. Dallin Hall down the lane against Mahaney. Flips it up and in. That's a big, strong freshman, Dallin Hall. Got to make him pay. Just throw it over the top to your big man. You had a dunk underneath the hoop. I understand wanting to pull it out. Take your advantages when you have them. Take your dunk. It's a free two points. Mitchell Saxon, he must have gotten popped in the eye. One eye is sort of half shut closed. Logan Johnson shot blocked by Gideon George. What a play. Here comes George. Lost it. Got it back. George puts it in. And Mark Pope wants a timeout. Lead is down to seven. The 26-point lead with under 15 minutes to play in the game. St. Mary's has led the entire game. They've never trailed. And right now, without a timeout against this pressure, the re end result is very much in doubt. Mahaney and the Gales break the press. They want a three-on-one opportunity there, and they pull it back out. And I, and I understand you want to run time. I get that. I understand how Randy Bennett wants to play, but I think eventually you've got to make them pay for pressing you and take the easy shots. And Mahaney, who had such a great first half, only two in the second half, they're basically taking him out of the game. Johnson goes down the lane and got fouled. Logan Johnson got stripped going up, but they called the foul. He struggled at the free throw line tonight. He's three of six at the line. St. Mary's as a team has missed eight free throws. They're calling this a one-on-one. So that was not a shooting foul. This is a big, big shot for St. Mary's. Made it. The guy who's been through the wars, Logan Johnson. Yep, and this is where you lean on him. You know, I mean, he's, he's been the guy that all season long, he came back for the COVID year. He's made the most out of it. First team all-conference, WCC Defensive Player of the Year. Only well, we can make one or two, though. The free throw line has been problematic. Yeah, four of eight for Logan Johnson. The lead is eight, under three to play. Will BYU have enough time to complete what would be an all-time comeback? Saunders, the freshman, right down the lane. Saunders with the left hand, no. I thought he maybe had a simpler shot. Well, look, they're extending out the press now, even on misses. I like this. That is smart. And again, St. Mary's out of timeouts. So if they get pinned or trapped, they, they don't have a, an escape hatch. Right now, BYU just switching everything. St. Mary's offense just has not been able to take advantage of that. Johnson rejected by Ali Atiki. The run out. Spencer Johnson scores! Down to six. Oh, Hall was just a step late there. The pass to Mitchell Saxon and no shot on the floor of foul. So again, 
free throws, but what a block by Ali Atiki. Well, you just wall up, and it's textbook. The front guy walls up. It's the help side guy, the secondary defensive player that can get the block, and then it allows you to run out in transition and be able to score against St. Mary's without their defense being set, and that has been really key here for BYU. Mitchell Saxon has not been a great free throw shooter, and this is a one-and-one. One. The first one rattles down. Under two to play. A 26-point lead is down to seven. And Randy Bennett looks like he wants this last minute 58 to be over fast. Second one. No good. Rebound tapped around, controlled by BYU. And the missed free throws are a huge part of the story. Yeah, but now time is not on your side. you got to play really quick here, but you got to play in control of your BYU. Paul fell down. That is not in control. Yeah, he, he, his ankle turned or whatever. Fell down and threw it out of bounds. That's big. Sideline inbound against this press. They're just running to trap whenever they can. And Kyle Bowen has been unwilling to do anything but that when he catches in the front court. At this point, you understand why. A minute 30 to go, up seven. BYU not fouling. But I think they play this one out. Next one, they'll start fouling. Aiden Mahaney's been the big shot maker late game for St. Mary's all year. Offensive foul. Shot went down, but he gets called for the foul. Turnover. Oh, there's a complete flip of the script for Mahaney. He was great in the first half. Has struggled to find any rhythm. It was a buzzer beater win for Gonzaga over San Francisco. Early in WCC play. On the hilltop. So that's still to come tonight. First things first. The final minute 20 here for BYU. Got to go fast. Down seven. Dallin Hall had it poked away just momentarily. Now to Saunders. Saunders baseline. Reverse. Good. I tell you, I did not say get the ball in his hands. I mean, he, he's been aggressive. And almost a turnover right there by Aiden Mahaney. Instead, it's going to end up being a foul. Yeah, he got popped in the face. I think that got the foul called. But Saunders' ability to rip and go, and as this program transitions into the Big 12, I think he's one of the building blocks that they're going to be able to, to look at and say, hey, he can be a difference maker. The deflection there and then just the reach around from behind. Yeah, that was a chance for the turnover and almost bad luck for BYU. They didn't get it. So now it's Mahaney double bonus. That's something for St. Mary's. Mahaney guaranteed to get two free throws. The freshman who's got that clutch gene makes the first. He, to he told me it's actually his brother Carter that had the clutch gene in high school. Had about seven buzzer beaters. His brother plays for Chico State. Well, Aiden's been pretty clutch this year for St. Mary's. Yeah, it took Aiden a while to get his first. And now, now he seems to know what to do late <laughs> Kind of game. thrives in it now. Yeah. He made them both. Seven-point lead for the Gales. Hall is down the lane. Hall, three, contested. Good! Tough shot under a minute to go. Mahaney pinned Dukas into the front court. Bowen holds. You would think they want to foul him. They don't. Now Mahaney's got it. They're not fouling. Well, they now they do. Foul. You can't let any time run off the clock here. If you're able to get that turnover, it's completely different, right? But, but as soon as they break half court, you have to foul right away. And I would have fouled Kyle Bowen. Yeah, it may have not been, uh, there may not have been anybody close enough to get to him, but that's the guy you really yeah. want to find a way to foul. And you just got to scramble out of it. Yeah. So that's, that's the tough part. You're expending so much energy with extending out your press. And when they throw over the top, you've got to turn your head and you've got to be a world-class sprinter and get back to the level of the ball and try to foul immediately. What an effort from Dallin Hall in the second half. He fouls out. Two shots again for Mahaney. He just made two a moment ago. He missed it. The free throw misses for St. Mary's. Only a four-point lead. It was 26 14 minutes ago. One of two for Aid Mahaney. He's got to pick this up and go. No time to waste. He goes. Step through. And scores. 
More pressure. Dukas to Johnson. Logan Johnson along the sideline. Finds Bowen underneath for the layup. Good. First time all night. The whole they've game. attacked it to a score. Five-point deficit. Williams rejected by Logan Johnson, who came out of nowhere. And then Mahaney gets fouled and hits the floor hard. Nineteen seconds left. A five-point lead for St. Mary's Mahaney to the line. What a block. <laughs> what a block by Logan Johnson. The athleticism of Logan Johnson. It's sneaky. You see it at times. I mean, wow. He was, he almost hit his head on the foam. His head was about to hit the backboard. Conference Defensive Player of the Year coming up with a big-time defensive play. If you questioned him winning that award, that play would be evidence in favor of the Defensive Player of the Year in the WCC. This is huge, obviously, for Mahaney. Crazy game. SVP talking about bad beats. Well, he missed it. This could be a double bad beat, potentially. <laughs> From how they do that to, oh my gosh, St. Mary's found a way. Loose ball. Rudy Williams under 10. Spencer Johnson, open look, in and out. Ali Atiki gets blocked but fouled with three seconds left. Dave, let me just take this moment here. Okay, please. BYU came in this conference 10 years ago. Yep. They thought they were going to be the team that was going to challenge and knock Gonzaga off the perch. They're going to leave this conference after 10 years, not winning a conference championship in the regular season or a conference tournament championship. And that's pretty hard. I mean, you think about all the great teams. They've had some pretty good teams. That yeah. 2020 team I thought was good enough to reach the Sweet 16 with the Oli Childs, Haas, and Toulson. Truly remarkable. But I think that them coming into this conference actually forced others to step up their game. And we've seen not only Gonzaga, but St. Mary's continue to elevate and, and keep their strong positioning in this conference throughout this journey of BYU. And by the way, BYU will be drastically missed in this conference. They will be. They've been great for the WCC. But the final second of BYU's time in the West Coast Conference is happening right now with a tremendous effort from the Cougars. An unbelievable effort by Mark Pope's team to make it what this is. I mean, it was a 30-point game, Dave. And our friend Stanford Steve paying attention to these free throws. Okay. In and out. In and out. No good. Dukas with a smile on his face. Stanford Steve might not have a smile on his face. Second one, good. Rudy Williams is going to pick it up. He'll heave it down the court. That one hits the backboard. BYU's time in the WCC comes to an end. St. Mary's, meanwhile, a chance for a conference championship. They survive and move on to the...